Okay, so as uh, you guys will remember from very early on in the Energy Sovereignty Project, uh, we created a great deal of concern over Rule 21. Now, Rule 21 isn't all bad, and we can go into uh, uh, detail of, of how and uh, how it works and all of that at a later date. But this video, it's really important that we cover one of the abuses of Rule 21. Now, Rule 21 could be used by people that wanted to, to try and slow down or make installations more difficult than they need to be. Now, this might be simply because they don't know how these systems work, or it could be something that's malicious. Either way, it has to stop. <laughs> yeah. And the only way that it will stop is if we bring this information to you and you can then, if you're confronted with the same situation that Tomas was confronted with, you link them to this video. You show them this video. This is absolutely crazy and let them know that if they have a problem with it still after seeing this video that you'll be sending this video to your lawyer. That's the only way that I can possibly think uh, to to solve this. So, Tomas, give us a quick rundown on the uh, on the, the what you were sent. So, the forms of the SGIP have been going back and forth, right. and PG&E came back uh, to Chad and said uh, you, you missed something. So he got on it, filled them out, sent it back off. A couple weeks go by. Uh, we got a response letter that said this is an email that you cannot respond to. However, we're informing you that you, your system is not in compliance with Rule 21 and such that the inverters need to be able to do such and such and such and four and five on the dip switch settings have to be uh, <laughs> set. And I'm like, oh, criminy. I don't so, know if it does this. You know? So I love so I love it. This is not something you can respond to. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Well, not only was it not only you can't respond to the email, but you know, there's nobody really to explain it. So I immediately said to, well, SMA's got to know. So I called SMA. Well, they didn't know, and I then called uh, the manufacturer under an 800 number and went in as a contractor. So a, a homeowner can't even contact these people. So I went in as a contractor, because I am a contractor, and I said, look, you got to explain this to me, and why is, you know, which, which version of the SMAs are compatible? So there's only two versions that they have that are compatible. So if you're installing a solar system, and you're not doing Tesla batteries, all those new inverters have to be this Rule 21 compliant. Mm -hmm. So they've got you. So that's where if you buy something off the internet, that's really what I want to warn people about. If you buy something off the internet and it's not uh, Rule 21 compliant, you're going to be out of the water. You know, there's yep. nothing you're going to be able to do other than to find a Tesla Gateway. Yeah. <laughs> Tesla gateway. Well, so so now what I want to what I want to explain to the folks uh, about what I'm going to say next is is that it does pertain just to the Powerwall batteries. If you have LG Chem batteries or some other battery set that somebody has installed, you may need to try and figure out how to run your system ultimately through some kind of a gateway because this video doesn't even apply to you because when you installed your solar systems, you are relying on your battery system. So let's back up just a little bit. So here you have the normal inverters that most people have, you have solar, you have to have an inverter to turn that DC into usable AC, and then possibly if you're going to go ahead and send it out to the grid, that's great. Now, if you have microinverters, that is to say an in, a small inverter at each panel, all right? A lot of people do that because it was early, especially early on, because it was a great way to get the reporting back from each individual panel. But if you have those microinverters on each individual panel, they then all go through a main controller. And that main controller then has to be linked to some place like Enphase or some other um, monitoring company that the utilities have access to. That's part of Rule 21. And the reason for that is that if the grid got itself into a situation where it was super saturated, they need a way to then send a signal back so that the solar output to the grid can be shut down. 
But if you have a system that has microinverters and a controller, it is absolutely exactly the same as what you're looking at here from a compliance standpoint. There is no way for any of these inverters to send power out the grid. These inverters charge those batteries. Those batteries send power out to the grid and they do so through a Rule 21 compliant Tesla gateway. Everything on the battery side is compliant. It's, it's not attached to the grid at all. It's his. What is the public utility thinking they're going to do? Turn his solar off? No. So that's not going to happen. And so if you have Tesla batteries, and you have had some kind of a pushback like this from the utility companies, send them this video. They have no jurisdiction over these inverters. These inverters are all resting on the battery side of the system. And the Tesla gateway is what controls that system. And if the utility needed to either monitor or turn off the power to the grid, they can do so through Tesla. The app will show you that your system is now, for whatever reason, no longer sending power out to the grid, and then maybe Tesla can let you in on the joke and give you a little message as to why that might be. But, uh, uh, so I hope you guys found this informative. It's real important that we get this information out quickly. And so uh, please help us out with this. If you know anybody that's running through this problem, if they've been told that they have to change their inverters because they're non-Rule 21 compliant and they have Tesla power walls, please do them a big favor and let them know that that is not the case. The gateway is the key. Gateway is the key.